Hi, today I'm going to show you how to composite 3D objects into images you have. Um, we're going to be using a software called FSpy. And um, this is going to be a pretty easy uh, tutorial. I would recommend maybe having a basic understanding of Blender because I'm going to go kind of fast. I'm not really going to explain a lot, but in general you should be okay. This is the this is a composite render I did earlier for a project I was doing uh, for a school team. Uh, we competed in a, a CAD design challenge where we had to create a product for a client uh, that wanted a, a third party food delivery vehicle. Uh, and this was the design we came up with. And this was the first time I'd done any real compositing of 3D uh, models into uh, an, a scene, into an image. And it was actually quite easy. Um, so I, I found some techniques that you can use to get, you know, higher quality uh, renders, higher quality images, and make it look a lot more realistic. And I'd like to share some of them with you. None of them are too, I'd say, unique. I mean, a lot of them I borrowed from other people, but I couldn't really find one video that had all of these techniques all together or really went into it in too much detail. So I decided to create one. So first things first, you need to install FSpy. You need FSpy to make sure that you can extract the perspective and camera data from an image. Uh, camera data, I mean like uh, the, the focal length. And so FSpy helps you do that by uh, figuring out where the um, the vanishing points are, the, the horizon lines and stuff like that, and uh, helping you uh, find out other things about the camera. Um, first, you need to install FSpy. It's an application. Uh, and then you need to get the add-on that allows you to import FSpy files into Blender and that lets you get the camera data and everything within Blender and it's it's actually really easy, very simple. Uh, once you've done that, um, depending on the image you want to use, you might want to look into getting an HDRI. I used one called uh, Blue Lagoon Night. Uh, it just fit the scene I wanted. Honestly, I could have maybe found some better ones, but I, I had uh, installed this earlier for a different project. Uh, look around, see if you find something that really works and then uh, let's get started. So first let's open up FSpy. And I'm going to find the image I want to use. So I had this image because the client is from Toronto and we wanted to put, uh, you know, a scene off Toronto into it. So then uh, what you basically start doing is you start mapping this up. So we're going to put the Y axis here and we want to find parallel straight lines that we want to represent the Y axis. So this looks kind of good. Uh, and you should, you know, you'll tweak it later, but get a rough idea. And luckily, the sidewalk is hopefully square, so uh, or you know, parallel. It's a parallelogram, so we can extract a lot of data from there. Uh, and if we can get it lined up properly, it should give us. There we go. Uh, it looks. I mean, it looks about right. We can start fiddling around with this more. But you see that it then starts to put this point that will actually start accurately trying to map out where things will be uh, through the data you give it or through the information you give it. Now, uh, there is an issue here. The Z axis is pointing down. So to change this, we go to the, the vanishing point axes and we change uh, at least the Y or the X to either negative Y or negative X. So let's just do negative X. And now we have our Z axis pointing upwards. And this is important because if we don't fix that, it'll import into Blender with uh, an upside down scene and that's gonna just be a pain to work with. I'm sure you could <laughs> you could get it to work, but uh, it's no point. There's more work you need to do later on. Then what we wanna do is we wanna add a um, 3D vanishing point as well. So what we'll do is we'll add one here. I don't remember exactly where I did it, but I think it was something like this and we'll fiddle around with it till it works that doesn't seem to be doing anything um, so i'll i'll come back whenever i get something decent all right i i don't see myself getting anything better than that maybe just a little bit more but that that's starting to look generally more more what i wanted um, and up now I've gone and messed it up again, but yeah, this looks, this looks somewhat right. So what we're going to do is we're going to save this and then we're going to move over to Blender. All right. So once you've exported our FSpy file, what we need to do is we need to go to our preferences and our add-ons and make sure we install the add-on, uh, the, the zip file for the add-on that we got from FSpy. And we also need to make sure we have Node Wrangler enabled because it's just a generally pretty good no, um, 
a pretty good add-on that's just a good ease of uh, use add-on and you should always have it on now what we need to do is we have a new project we don't need anything in it uh, and so once we delete everything we go to import and now that we've got the add-on fspy should show up so we click fspy we locate where we put our file and now we import the file and this should show up it should work and as you can see it's created a camera in the scene and once we go into it everything looks correct we can add a plane and that looks right we can scale it up move it around it should do everything that we wanted now all we need to do is line up the plane and just make a little bit of geometry for the area we want our object to be inside of so once we have that we're generally good to go so um, let's we can save the project I'll call it fspy tutorial and now it's time to try and uh, get the object in so I'm just gonna go find my object import it in and then we'll continue so I've now imported my model um, and you know let's get a HDRI that we had installed earlier open so we can start to look at what it looks like so I'll locate where I keep my HDRs and we'll find the HDR there we go blue lagoon night and we can now start to see what it looks like this was the uh, design we came up with uh, and it looks oh, we're rendering Eevee aren't we let's make sure we go to cycles and it looks fine it's a little too bright so I'm just gonna reduce the amount of light I'm getting from HDR and this is the model we came up with this was our delivery machine now what we need to do is we need to go to our uh, this plane that we created and we need to go to settings um, not really settings the object properties we need to go to uh, visibility and we need to make it a shadow catcher so now all this is going to do is it's going to try and find the um, take the shadow that is cast and uh, just render that out and then also what we need to do is we need to go to uh, output properties or no uh, render settings and we need to go to film and transparent so now it won't you know try and use the HDR background it'll actually allow it to be transparent and we can see that there is a shadow being created and being caught by the shadow catcher um, but the issue is it's not really matching the shadows we see in the render this is a pretty easy fix this is very quick what we want to do is we want to go into the shading editor I use the shading editor a lot of people really don't it's just a habit I've now developed but we go to the world settings and this is the, the HDR we have now it's important that we had node wrangler because if you do control T it shows up all the mapping stuff now what we need to do is we need to rotate it across the Z which is obviously the vertical axis so we want to rotate this and look at the um, the shadow and move it till it's in the place we kind of want it so I'm thinking about 220 seems seems correct uh, let's move a little bit more yeah 2 219 220 or 210 uh, seems kinda what we needed for this scene so once we have that we'll we'll notice a few other issues uh, maybe we'll make the HDR a little bit brighter um, one thing is there's not really any accurate ref reflections the reflections we're getting are just from the HDR we'd like to have some reflections from the actual environment and this is something a lot of people I haven't seen everyone do but I mean it's a technique I learned specifically from uh, Ian Hubert so what we do is we do control or shift D just duplicate the shadow catcher and now let's you know name them so we'll have a shadow catcher and we'll also have reflections so now we take reflections we want to turn off the shadow catcher setting and we want to maybe we want to take this geometry and we want to extend it a little more so we want to have it go further back and go out a little bit more really honestly you don't need to do it too much just enough that it can have some uh, stuff projected onto it now that we have this let's actually go to material preview um, we need to texture this so that it can reflect things this is also pretty easy we go to shading we are in the world setting so we need to go back to object and now that we have this uh, selected we can go to oh, let's make this GPU render real quick so that it's not bogging us down uh, we want to create a material for it and we want to locate 
the file we had used, put that in here, and we want to just put that into the base color. Now, at first, this looks dumb. This looks really bad. So again, Control T using Node Wrangler, and now we want to take Window and plug that into the vector. Now, what that does is it shows basically uh, the camera's perspective, and it kind of it windows it, right? So you can see it's repeating. I mean, that doesn't really matter. You could make it uh, extend or whatever. But uh, the way it's it's seeing things is through the camera's eyes. Now we don't want to use principled BSDF because that um, is going to start you know interacting with the light, and we kind of don't want that. We want an emission, um, and so we're going to plug that in to the color. And now, hopefully, we can see reflections from the thing. So let's quickly turn off everything from the HDR just to make sure. And yep, sure enough, maybe increasing the oh, that's a little too much actually. We can see we have reflections from the ground, from the wall. And the object starts to look a little bit more like it is actually from the, the scene. Now we have another problem. This thing is in the render. The camera is going to see it. And we'd prefer it doesn't. So we go back into the, the visibility settings and we just turn off camera. It still shows up in the reflections. Everyone else still sees it. We just don't have the, the camera render it. And we can show the shadow catcher again. And you can see now the shadows are on top and we have the... Uh, reflections and it's starting to look a lot better now we can start going into the compositing so actually you know what let's um, extend this out on the Y a little bit more just so that you know because it, it'll cut off the shadows earlier and it'll look kind of weird and let's maybe actually bring it closer in here so that it doesn't render too long and once we get that done we can start compositing so before we composite we want to have the uh, render output, uh, the ambient occlusion, um, because what's going to happen is it's going to, m most of the, the light is still going to be from the HDR, and it's going to uh, have some issues uh, with the, the area over here being a little too bright and not really making as much sense. There needs to be some ambient occlusion. So we just want to get the ambient occlusion in the output. And then we can go to the compositor, use nodes, and render it out. So I'm just going to go to the render settings. I don't know, maybe 500. And let's, yeah, well, actually, we could go even a little less because this is a quick one. And then let's, uh, if you want, do some denoising, render denoising. I'm going to do optics because I have a NVIDIA graphics card. And uh, once you render that out, we'll continue. All right, so now we have the render output, uh, and it should show up in the compositing stuff, hopefully. Uh, we can start viewing it, so let's uh, add a, a viewer. Um, yep, and then in Node Wrangler, if you press Control shift and click on uh, something, it'll let you see all the maps, and it'll let you see it, so you can see the image. Uh, also, another thing is um, you'll see that you're too zoomed in. This can be an issue if you're working with really large images. Pressing V zooms out, and then pressing Alt V zooms back in. Let's uh, press V a few times. Let's move this a little bit to the side, and now we can start looking at things. Uh, I want to look at the AO. As you can see, we have some ambient occlusion. Let me click the viewer, look at it. Oh, come on. Zoom in. It is kind of bad. It's a little noisy. Uh, hopefully, in another. Another pass, it'll it'll be less noisy, but that's good enough for now. Uh, and we also have the albedo, we have the image. So we take the image and we can start now doing stuff with it. First, now we see that there's no background. We have the background in the camera; it's not here. So that's the first thing we're going to work with. We're going to go to image, we'll open that up, and we'll just locate the uh, the file. It should be here with the Toronto PNG, and we can just quickly check through the viewer. Yep, it works. And now what we want to find is something called alpha over. Okay, so we want the transparent image on the bottom and the actual image on top. Let's look at it through the viewer. And we can see, actually, let me make sure that's correct. Yep, that is correct. Uh, so the, the image that we were trying to put on top of the other image, we put on the bottom slot. And, and if we zoom in, we can see that that does seem to look correct. Uh, now there are some issues, uh, notably again, it's, it's looking weirdly bright, you know, near the areas where it should be much darker. 
So we'll take the, we'll just move this to the side, and we'll take the alpha over a little bit further away, and we're gonna do a mix, mix uh, here. And we're going to multiply the output by the uh, ambient occlusion. So this is before, and this is after. Maybe not as aggressively because we kind of want to preserve some of the, the reflections. Or maybe you know what? Let's try. Let's try instead mixing the the output we get from here. Let's see what that looks like. That actually looks a little bit better, um, though there is some issues, right, with the fact that we don't have the geometry everywhere. So you know what, actually, we'll, we'll go back to how it was earlier. We'll add the ambient occlusion over here, and oh, that'll go there, and then we'll just do this. And that looks pretty good, and we have the reflections now. And now you can start tweaking some of the lighting stuff. Uh, if, you, if you think, you know, it's a little too dark, uh, we can make the reflections a little more. We can maybe reduce the factor a little bit too so that some of the reflections look more accurate. And that's basically it. Once you've got that going, you're kind of done. It's Again, it's very simple, very quick, and we were able to get something that looks kind of good. Uh, if you want, you can play around with it more. Uh, I like to you know, sometimes add some uh, lens distortion uh, so I can add some dispersion. So we can do that right now. Uh, I don't know if if I'd really love to use it for this, but you can do that. Let's add, you want to add, you know, sparingly. Uh, it looks kind of weird if you add too much lens dispersion. That seems like a little bit of enough. Uh, I would add maybe uh, some glare. I'm thinking that would maybe look kind of good. So I just want to add it to the, the object. I don't want to add anywhere else. So I'm going to go glare, add that right here. That's too much. I'd prefer to use fog glow. And that's you know matching the glare in the background. Maybe reduce the threshold a little bit. Play around with that. See if that looks good in the compositor. That's looking good. If you're um, something for uh, for image nerd, you do a lot of stuff with Photoshop. You can then you know go Shift A, add some stuff for filtering, color levels, whatever. Um, but other than that, you know everything's left to taste. Just render it. Maybe with more samples, and you'll have a pretty good render. Uh, and yeah, thank you for watching. Oh, and just a few things I wanted to add later on. Um, I added another plane. Oh, it's huge. I didn't realize. <laughs> but I added another plane um, when I finally did the render because I felt like there wasn't enough... Um, there weren't enough reflections. If you look at the the, the solar panels on the top without the, the thing in the back, there it was kind of empty looking so I just added that so that it, the actual reflection showed up and then um, generally I forgot to add this when I render with blender I don't like the 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 contrast that's normally there so normally what I would do was I'd go and I'd increase it to like you know very high contrast but unfortunately it, it messes with the actual image right so instead I would recommend going into the compositor and actually adding bright contrast, you know, changing the contrast of the, the output of the render. Because if you don't, uh, if you look right here, it's, you know, it looks kind of weird. It's, it's too, it's too dim, it's too faded. So if you just change the contrast locally, it fits everything a lot better. That, that might be a case by case thing, but I felt like that was much, much nicer. It fit much better with the render. And yeah, sorry, thank you. Uh, I just felt like I should add that in.